Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening and good morning everybody. In this week, in this head to head, this episode, we are going to discuss about a most relevant and elegant topic, the censorship and the freedom of speech on social media. We have been admired with the esteemed presence of a man as a man of impractical records and a man who navigated the ship of world famous software Meta. Yes, Mr. Zuckerberg, he is expected to resolve all the programs. So Mr. Zuckerberg, please welcome to join with us. Take your seat. Thank you, thank you for joining with us. It's having very pleasure to be here with you. And there are many problems, and the world is facing the most important problems and passing into the pathetic situations. The social media is under scrutiny for the content moderation policies. So firstly, the recent scandals have led to many accused of Facebook, uh, accuse of Facebook on the most important government policies. So how do you respond to all these allegations? Firstly, I want to clarify that the Facebook and other social medias uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, suppress any uh, political movements uh, or political allegations. But our content, hello, our content, uh, our content uh, moderation policies are aimed for are only aimed for uh, creating a safety and creating uh, safety and uh, secure, uh, uh, creating a safety and secure operation for all the users. And the contents uh, uh, when the re contents were removed, uh, it's not it's not just because of the uh, community problems, but it's just because. Uh, of the political issues uh, faced by uh, the contents itself. Uh -huh. um, then how do you balance the need for the content modern policies uh, with the principles of free speeches? How do you navigate that situation? Uh, talking about that, uh, it's a uh, it's a very very specific balance, and we we uh, we can't uh, come to that point with that. Uh, we support we the Facebook or the Meta also support the every. Uh, every uses uh, for their f free speech, uh, free expression of their speech, uh, and uh, while protecting their from the uh, protecting uh, their from the uh, social and uh, other uh, harmful effects of the uh, social media. How do you say that? Uh, because we have, we all have witnessed the uh, removal of some posts of the violations of Manipur. So how could you say that? I think uh, you don't know 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 about that uh, uh, I think uh, that the aim the uh, first and foremost and the significant aim of ours is to foster uh, is to create a uh, to create a framework uh, on which uh, on which um, to create a framework uh, for to fostering the healthy discourses without any compromising yeah, yeah. Uh, without any compromising safety okay 
Many of the activists uh, believe the statement that proportionately the marginalized voices. So, for instance, the Black Lives Matter protest the removal or the flagging of the some forces. Yeah. Uh, then what the steps did you forward uh, to prevent all these problems through your Facebooks and Instagram or uh, other meta devices? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we recognize the importance of the uh, importance of the movements like uh, you, you just you said that uh, black black lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and here uh, we the steps we are uh, put forward is that we collaborate with the uh, most of the uh, organizations, most of the all all the organizations like NADG, DH, and other organizations, other human rights organizations, and uh, just uh, just look to the internet that we have we have launched many uh, many of the uh, resources that uh, like safety check to prevent this thing. Okay, okay. Um, I think we are all covered with all the topics and all the problems that have been made in the social media platform. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Mr. Zuckerberg, for your valuable thoughts and your precious time. Judges, please note, next on the stage, call letter B. The topic is Climate Change Crisis Negotiation. Mock positions, Greta Thunberg, Climate Activities versus a Government Official Special Situation is that the debate occurs after a series of natural disasters and the official has to justify the slow implementation of climate policies. Good evening, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to join by a global voice for climate issues and environment justice. At just 50 years old, she sparked for a worldwide movement, uh, raising her voice against the government and uh, protesting against the lacks of the government in implementing climate issues, climate uh, policies. Her unwavering dedication and fearless uh, advocacy have inspired a lot of people, especially the young generation of our contemporary world. To raise, against the, to raise voice against the government and also uh, raise against the voice of the government, voice against the government and also to re-examine their relationship with the nature. She has been the speaker of uh, speaker at United Nations and uh, Nobel, P Nobel Peace Prize nominee. And more than that, she more than that she is a. Great example for the great uh, example for the youngsters yeah, uh, raising voice against the government. Please put our hands together to one of our chief guest, Greta Thunberg. Hello, how are you? Please be seated. Let's start our uh, interview. First of all, I have a question for you. As a climate young activist, what is your opinion about the role of young people in shaping and pushing government for implementing more effective climate policies for the safety of our future uh, natural and uh, environmental environment? Yeah, in my perspective, youth's voice is more effective than any others. Not only in this case, but in any case, if there is a voice of youth, it will become more effective and people become attacked by that. And it is an universe truth that the youth's voice is more effective and they can... Yeah, also we know you, you do uh, start your protest against the government for the natural in your 50 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it will, uh, they can make many changes in our society. Yeah, okay. Uh, I happen to hear to, in your past interviews about the lacks of the government in implementing, uh, implementing climate policies. And you said that it's incumbent upon government the urgency of action. Is it correct? Yeah. Uh, nowadays, in this country world, uh, climate issues are happening as the meteorologist is predicted. But it's quite opposite to them. Yeah, opposite uh, against the predictions of the meteorologists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
uh, and there are many technologies in many countries uh, to prevent these calamities but in some countries uh, they are lacking such technologies uh, that's why the big developed countries are experiencing such calamities nowadays uh, as we all know uh, examples are uh, earthquake in Japan and Taiwan and okay. also uh, the uh, wildfire in California and flood in Germany has caused so many fatalities and economic damages and many countries have signed in this Montreal protocol in order to decrease the emission of CO2. Yeah, as you all know, a lot of countries implemented uh, schemes for promotion of their electrical vehicles to decrease the emission of CO2. Yeah, is that? Yeah, we have to promote that. Uh, uh, and also, you know, but these countries uh, didn't fulfill their promises. They are only saying blah, 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 and they don't do it, nothing. Yeah, just a whole lot of arguments like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion about international cooperation of your country with other nations to tackle the global nature of climate change, especially in the aftermath of these disasters? Yeah, uh, there has been so many, uh, there has happened so many uh, summits uh, to prevent these uh, calamities, and uh, some of the examples are uh, COP28, UN Climate Conference, and UN Climate Conference, which is held in uh, Bago, Azerbaijan. Yeah. Yeah, that's so many. The G20 summit like, in India. Like yeah, that. yeah, that's also. It's time to end our uh, this section. Thank you for your valuable contribution for our BBC channel. We can join in other episode. Thank you. Thank you for. Judges, please note. Next on stage, call letter C. Topic is the future of space exploration. Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist versus a government budget analyst. The situation is that funding for a Mars mission has been cut and Tyson has to convince the analyst to restore the budget while addressing national security concerns. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa The sun has been curving to set while we all knew about the recent news that the funding for the mass mission of NASA has cut. And it is caused for recession and new innovations of NASA. And there are many justifications from the government. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Neil Diggers Tyson, praying on for you. Today, in this new edition of Space Affairs, I'm in front of you to go to head to head with Mr. Luis Gustavo, the budget analyst of USA. So, I'm go I'm co I will question him, I will question him on the topic, why they cut the budget of NASA. So give a handful of applause to Mr. Luis Gustavo. Welcome, sir. Please. Thanks for joining with us. How are you, sir? I'm feeling pretty good. And what with you? Me too. And let's bump into the questions. Okay, sure, carry on. Okay, let's start with the fundamental questions. Why cut, fi uh, cut funding for the MOAS mission when it represents a critical opportunity for scientific advance advancement and innovation? How do we just write this? Okay, firstly, I'm thanking all of you for having me in this hot and pot. And 
a lot is in your dress, make you handsome. Yeah, okay, yeah. Neil. And this is a controversial issue to discuss. And here, the subject is the captivating phenomenon that had gripped our society, especially in the Hertz course of the astronauts. Yeah. And I um, appreciate the mission of the Mars. The, some countries have their own space associations. Yeah, yeah. So like NASA. Okay. Yeah. I know. I like NASA. The America won the name and the fame through the astronomical achievements uh, of the NASA. Yeah. Okay. Here the issue is the budget. Budget have, uh, has some more goals and ambitions, especially through the uh, some example, some health, educations, and some of the basic needs and the additional needs. So we first care the basic needs. Okay, that's us. Oh, perfect answer from you. Okay, yeah. The second question from me: National security undoubtedly vital, but how do you see space exploration's effort contributing to national security? Is not there a case to be made that advancing space technology can enhance our security capabilities? The national security concerns is a another important area. Of course. So this is the issue of the budget. I also say that astronomical achievements how to get the national security concerns uh, in the stage of the high. Okay. So we have. To, I'm also said that we have to care the basic needs, basic uh, facilities like the healthcare and others. So we have to uh, make the solution for our domestic issues. Okay. My oh, a perfect uh, answer from you. My third question is, what if we develop a strategic plan that outlines the technological advancement and potential job creation? Okay, okay, so that's the, the okay, uh, that's a plan. Strategical plan is already uh, good. It's uh, true. Yeah. But there are many problems like the budget have uh, budget have some goals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. My last question for you, how do we maintain our leadership in space if we continually deprioritize exploration? Other nations are making significant strides in their space programs. Is not there a rise of falling behind? NASA uh, gave the, some name and frame to the America through their achievements. Okay, yeah. Upstairs, I may give an example for the, the country, Japan. Hey, no, no, that's the same problems. Health, education, there are the basic needs. There are the basic needs, uh, man. Yeah. They grow the, their development along with their space organization yeah, no, budget. That's the basic needs. Is a, firstly, we want to uh, save our basic facilities and then to the additional facilities. Okay, yeah. An average answer from you, sir. Okay, time off. Um, the time is up. We are concluding our section. Thanks for joining with us and all the spectators who join with us. See you on the next episode. Okay, thanks. Hello, Sradikuga, Nilevil, Al Ahirail, Sanaviya Vibagatinde, face to face English Mal Seratinisham, Vedi Unultane, Ula Vibagam, Song Mal. Ula Vibagam, Song Malayalam Al Seram, Vedi Unne, Al Kahirail, Arim Bikin the Dairikim, Ula Vibagam. Sorry, Sanya Vivagam, Malayalam Song Malserum, Vedional Kahira Laram Bikin the Arikim, Adine Pedinal Gitula, Murval Malserar Tigram, Yetrem Betane, Avadaver Day, Codlet Sigirikan, Vedi Persetanamane, Harikuno, Leaders Radikuga. Judges, please note. Next on the stage, the last candidates of this face-to-face -face English program. Code letter D. Their topic is the ethics of artificial intelligence in healthcare. Mock positions: Elon Musk versus a medical doctor. The situation is a groundbreaking AI system has made a controversial medical decision, and the doctor questions its ethical use.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the another episode of this Face to Face. It's me, Jordan Peterson. It's not a frightful and and it's not an ignorance than more than it's an ignorance of action in this current critical and the world situation. So in this in this episode, we are very admired of the esteemed presence of the impractical impractical records and the dignity and a dignity citizen and a CEO of the SpaceX and related technological companies. It is the Elon Musk. So in this exchange, in this exchange, we are expected to share his thoughts. So let's welcome the guest to the chair. Pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, thank you. In this alluring vicinity and it's too perplexed to, and by surroundings that to say that you are not being uh, sleeping for more than four hours a day. No, 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 no. I am used to it, bro. I'm used yeah. to it. Okay, so let's dive into the uh, to some uh, specific and serious terms that you have recently resigned from the open eye for your concerns about the ethicality of the AI and its industry. So as well as we can observe that you are entered the AI rights. And it's a sort of a paradox, right? Oh, well, we have resigned from AI because uh, we started, we started, we enter our game in open because it's, it was initially started as an open source. Yeah. But when the company usually grow up, grew up, uh, did that our initial policies were altered. And now the reason why I have entered into the race of AA is that the other companies, uh, the other companies in this field are in considering the benefits of humankind. And they aren't also uh, open sources. And at this point of history, if, the, if we didn't enter to this race, this will probably be the most blunderous disaster of the humankind in this century. Oh, okay. It reaches from California that your company, so-called Neuralink, had to uh, take some steps towards the medical diagnosis. Huh? What is your yeah, It was a great milestone we achieved. It was a great milestone. Yeah. And it was surrounding the basic needs of human beings. As it's around the, as it's surrounding the Medicare, uh, we would be, it was a great milestone that AI applied to Medicare systems mechanics will probably benefit the human kind more that uh, AI artificial intelligence mechanics will be more accurate and it will fasten the process more okay but as well as we can some it's a, some sort of a menace of the human kind and it's not a milestone that uh, uh, you had uh, mentioned before and uh, the philanthropist of the from the global uh, areas had raised the concerns about you, uh, uh, your oh, initiatives. Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan yes, philanthropists yes. like you all over the world, uh, mostly probably known as uh, philanthropists, philanthropists, psychologists like you, yeah. uh, always hinders the development of the human kind at any point. Look at the example of Tesla. We started, it as a benefit, it is a very benefit of the human kind. But you took your concerns at that time also. And you found it, no, the results of it. Yeah, you? I know, you are right. Yes, yes. And, this, and that was the, the issue of Tesla was much more dire than this issue. And we have also made this AI system, AI applied medical mechanics, open resource too. And what's up your concerns now? So you don't, you have only taken it as open source, but you don't have any taken any more steps and uh, and uh, and uh, any more steps to secure this process more. Mr. Jordan, uh, we are prioritizing the safety of the patients first. As, he, as we, you know that, we have ensured the data privacy, uh, safety, security, accountability, and liability of the patients, of the, of the information regarding to the patients. And we have also made, we have also collaborated with the regulate, regulatory bodies like yes. FDA, NTMA, yes. and also we have been provided with, and we have also been provided with a special bench of body uh, that is specially designed to research the ethical concerns over these issues and to the development. Okay. 
okay and you have some companies like the SpaceX and the Neuralink and any some sort of the boring company which is uh, not such a boring so and which company are you up to the most oh oh uh, to finally conclude this we have to uh, we have to we have to discuss many things firstly Neuralink which, is, which have which we have discussed uh, at, the, at to these times is the most important at this it's of the basic needs of humans and it's all. Neuralink will be the most prioritized company of ours. Okay, so let's wrap this episode. Thank you. Thank you for your time, to, to spending for your valuable time. So let's see in the new episode. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.